Hey, what's going on, Internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we got a great typography tutorial. We're going to be looking at three great examples in this video. And the one thing I want to talk about before jumping into the content here, I want us to look at other people's work, for example. So the one thing that I like to do, or at least what I like to do back when I was learning After Effects and, you know, a bunch of other things, I like looking at other people's work and breaking it down and learning exactly how they did it. And I think that it really is the best way to learn by seeing something that you really like and just looking at the subtle subtleness of some of the content in there and the animation you can really start breaking it down and seeing how they did it and you recreate it so now you know how to do something that you really enjoyed and you can create something that's very professional so here is a typography template from video hive that i looked at and i was like yeah there's a lot of great subtle animation with typography in here and i want to show you three examples from this template i'll link this template in the description of the video if you're looking to buy something if you don't really have time to recreate anything and i'm going to start doing that because a lot of people who watch my videos uh ended up actually trying to create it for a professional piece so buying templates is always a good way to save time and just also learn as well. So go ahead and link a couple of these in the description, take a look at them and try to recreate them for yourself. The first typography that we look at is a positioning animation where the text kind of pops out out of nowhere, has this nice little bounce to it. This is what I would call a very subtle but nice positioning animation where you can just add a little bit more character to your text rather than just popping it up and having it sit there. So you can see this like little extra bounce here at the top once it comes in. So let's go ahead and let's create that right now. So so we have our text in here. I'm using the typeface Fruiticur. Really great typeface for uh, typography. But let's come here and let's talk about this position animation. So, so if you want to do a position animation, a lot of people are going to hit P on their keyboard and bring up position property and do their keyframing. But I don't suggest doing that. If you, if you want to create a nice subtle animation, open up your text layer, go to animate and click on position. And what this is going to allow you to do is just say you want your text to start off from down here and we'll go to the range selector, add a keyframe for start and move forward in time to maybe a second and a half or so. And we'll set this up to 100%. Now, each letter is going to come up individually from, obviously, down south here, right? So what's cool about this, if you take the position animation here, if you take the position parameter here, you can move it over anywhere in this comp. And it's going to come in from that direction with the start percentage. So that's really cool. But we'll keep it right down here. So this is pretty decent, but we don't have any of that extra nice animation towards the end. It's just kind of popping up in there. Not enough of subtleties. Let's go to animate again and let's add another position parameter. And we'll do what we'll do this time is we'll increase the Y position up by just a little bit. And then we'll go to the range selector, add a keyframe for start, and we'll have this keyframe maybe like three frames in. So maybe we'll do like five frames there. And We'll go a little bit past the last keyframe here and we'll set this up to 100%. So now as the text moves up, you can see that it's going to have this extra bounce and it's going to fade back down. So that's really nice. And, and we'll make the last two keyframes easy, easy keyframes by hitting F9 on our keyboard and now allow it to kind of slow down before it comes to a complete stop. And I think that looks pretty good. So what can we do to even take this a little bit further? So obviously we don't want the text to be in this position as we come in here, right? So what we can do to fix this, Pre-compose the text. So go up to layer, pre-compose, make sure the text layer is selected when you did that, and just click OK. And now we can grab the rectangle tool, which is here at the top, and we'll draw and we'll draw a rectangle box just like this. And now your text just comes in like that. No problem. We have a little bit of a nice bounce in there. Things are looking good. So if this is a single word to put more emphasis on this, what we can do is a simple scale animation by hitting S on our keyboard, add a keyframe for it. Move forward in time by just a, you know, maybe like a second or so. And we'll do like a slow scale down so people have time to read it. So maybe we'll go to like 90%. And then really quick, what we'll do is we'll do a quick jump. So like maybe we'll bring this down to 75%. So now what we have, we have the text coming in and then a slow fade on. Okay, that's cool. And then a quick jump. So it, that can add just a little bit more, you know, a focus onto your text and a little bit more excitement just by not having it sit there. Yeah, it can look really nice. So let's go ahead and let's move forward here. So the one thing I found cool about that template I showed you was that it had the ability to really bring cool emphasis on large groups of text, which is really not easy to, you know, make good unless you break it up into visual layers or you do crazy things with it. But I found something very subtle about being able to worry about the fade in time and being able to control that animation. As you can see, it comes in fast, slows down, and then goes back to fast. I think that is really cool if you have the right mood for that sort of thing. So let's take a look at how we can control this with just 
you know, the graph editor and position keyframe. So let's go ahead and get started with this one. So here is our text all by itself, no animation. And what I like to do is use an animation preset here, the typewriter preset. So go to effects and presets, go to animation presets, go to the presets and text animate in and there's a nice preset called typewriter and all it does it reveals each character one at a time kind of as if you're typing it out so it's a good way to just quickly create your animation so if i preview this it's just really plain it's boring kind of just comes on in sequential order and there's nothing special there so we're going to control the speed the contrast and it's going to look great so let's move this keyframe out to maybe like three to four seconds so we have a little bit more time to work with this animation and make sure that the parameter here is selected or whatever you're doing. It doesn't even have to be this parameter. You could be doing scale animation or positioning. Go to the graph editor with that parameter selected with the keyframes. And you can see we have this linear movement right here. So here's what a lot of people like to do. They like to select all their keyframes, hit easy ease, make F9, you know, F9 easy ease keyframes. And now you get this curved movement here. And, you know, you can kind of get that slow fade on that's you know and uh, kind of slow down towards the end and that's very typical but what about actually controlling it let's get started here so what we can do to add a point is come here to maybe a one one second add a keyframe and we'll go to maybe almost two and a half seconds here add another keyframe so we added two keyframes here and what's cool about it if we select one of the keyframes we can see that we have these handles right we have this bezier curve if you will and what we can do is we can really start to control this. So we want this to kind of have a slow, subtle movement in the middle here. So we can take this keyframe here, bring that down, and we can kind of push this down as well. So now if we run through this, so it comes in nice and slow and speeds up. So we can even control this a little bit more. So maybe we'll go to the third keyframe here and we'll lower down the percentage. And we'll kind of curve that out a little bit more and we'll maybe curve this up. And by messing with the percentages here, trying to keep those exactly the same, just how to slow this down. The biggest thing you want to do is make sure that the Bezier curves are not like doing this, right? So if this point is, abo is above this point, you can see that it'll kind of go backwards, which is not what you want. So make sure that the, make sure that the last point here is definitely above the previous point. And now you'll have this nice slow animation. So let's go ahead and play this. And if we run through this, you can see that the animation is definitely controlled. And we have a little bit of contrast here. And this can look really cool if you're bringing on a lot of text, just being able to quickly animate it and control the speed of it to bring more emphasis on what you're looking at. So, so we'll take a look at the last but my favorite typography here that we're going to be looking at. And we have a lot to go through. We have a flicker. We have these nice tracking animations. So we have that position animation like we did in the first tip. So let's say we want to control each of the letters individually with what its transform position is doing. So let's come here and let's add a rotation to it. So what we can do here is go to the range selector. We can increase the start percentage. Maybe we'll go to right to the third letter here and we'll close it up on that letter. By using the start and end percentage, we can isolate certain letters here. And we can increase the rotation. Maybe we'll go to like right here. And what we can do is as soon as it pops up to right here, go to like the last keyframe, we can add a keyframe for rotation, move forward in time, maybe we'll go to like two and a half seconds or so, and set this to 0%. So now we have some individual animation to the rotation there. So now what we can do is select animator 2, duplicate it by hitting command D on a Mac or control D on a PC. And we can go to the range selector and we can increase the start percentage and the end percentage. So now we can control the T, make sure we're at that first keyframe for rotation and we'll kind of offset this by a little bit. Okay, so we have that in there. We can duplicate it again, go to range selector, increase the start percentage. So maybe we'll select the E and we'll, we could rotate it all the way out like this, or I'll bring it in. Okay, so we have a few rotation here, and obviously you can see how we can isolate each letter, but let's talk about tracking. So go to animate, and let's add a tracking parameter. So what we can do here is increase the tracking amount, so we can kind of have it jumped out here, and we have a little bit more space in between the letters, so that's in there, no problem. And as soon as we get this up in here, we want to add a keyframe for the range selector, go to start percentage, and we'll 
go out a little bit and we'll increase the start percentage to 100%. So there's a lot of parameters you can really work with here. So that kind of just comes in and fixes itself. And we have a little bit of that subtle animation in there that looks like we put a lot of work into it, but it's really easy to do, as you can see. So make the last keyframe easy ease. And let's talk about adding in a subtitle. So obviously, you're not always going to work with, you know, one letter. So you might have like a subtitle or a slogan to a company or whatever. So here we are with the subtitle and I'm working with the same exact tracking parameter we just worked with because we want to keep the animation consistent and working together. And I want this to animate in exactly when this subtle text kind of moves in together. So we'll come like right here. So what we can do to match this up, hit you and your keyboard to bring up the keyframes for the main title. And we can go to the last keyframe to the range selector, set this to 100% and match up that first keyframe as well. So that looks good. And let's talk about adding a quick flicker. So what you can do to add a quick flicker to this kind of bring this in uh, at the beginning, go to the first keyframe here, hit T on your keyboard for opacity, add a keyframe for opacity, move this keyframe forward by one frame, set it to 0%, select both the keyframes, copy them, move over by two frames, paste it, move over two more, two more frames and paste that. So now, so as the text tracks back together, you can see that's all kind of meeting on the left side. And let's say we don't want that. So let's come over here. Let's get rid of the start percentage. So we'll come here. Make sure the start percentage is back at 0%. Go to the tracking amount. Add a keyframe for that. Go to the last keyframe here and set the tracking, set the tracking amount down to 0. And now we scrub through here. You can see that the title comes together towards the middle now. So there's just a little bit of you know, subtle variation that you need to play with and make that right. And we can pre-compose the subtle text and do that same exact max masking technique to cover up our title like that. So, so now we have this great animation with all these parameters attached to it. That looks like we did a little bit of very detailed animation, but it took us just a few minutes to do it. And it's very easy. And always remember to turn on motion blur before you render out your titles. That'll always help you in the long run. So I hope you guys enjoyed this typography tutorial from a template we broke down off of VideoHive, just a few elements in this. There's a ton of elements in here, so if you want to take typography even further, I invite you to check out this template or a few other typography templates on the internet or just any type of work that you enjoy looking at and recreating it inside of After Effects. Study it, see the subtle nuances in it, and do it right here in this beautiful application. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel for more After Effects videos just like this, and please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of the video. And always be creating.